Hi, I'm Michael St. Clair. Today I'm going to give you a quick overview, a presentation of what's happening from spring 2014 when we're going to have a meeting with the Radiant Zones Network friends into 2020, 2021. I'm even talking into 2045, 2048 about some spectacular, really beyond rare astrological alignments. So this documentary is to explain the astrology, to talk about macroeconomics, the precious metals, gold at about $7,000, what would that mean? About preparations that our subscribers and clients are interested in. I'm being asked often questions in the public and I use the opportunity to do a video like this maybe once a year or once every other year. <clears throat> and come to think of it, we actually have just completed a documentary, a conversation really, with Michael Chaplin, the son of Charlie Chaplin. Michael Chaplin has written a book um, called A Fallen God, which is a historical thriller in which he goes into esoteric subjects, the occult of the 12th century, the Khazars, um, under attack by the Roman Empire. He goes even into astrology. He brings in an astrologer from the Orient into his story. And then Michael Chaplin is also working on a documentary about his father's heritage, which is gypsy heritage. Long and short is we had a conversation with Michael Chaplin and we're taking the opportunity because he is into these subjects also to make a presentation about all these issues and questions that come to me from readers who had studied my book, for instance, Foreseen and the little briefing book about the solution. Well, interestingly enough, we're talking about destiny and circumstances and how these two things work together. Well, that is exactly what the book uh, by Michael Chaplin is about. So this is his book, A Fallen God, which he has just published. And he goes precisely into this whole theme <clears throat> where he says, well, destiny, I'm paraphrasing, is what comes in from the future, from above to us, and circumstances is what comes from kind of below and from our past circumstances sort of push us around and destiny is what pulls us forward into the future. This is actually the core subject of Michael Chaplin's book and <clears throat> when I read this book I thought well this is a man I would like to talk to so again we completed this documentary with him and then I was asked to answer some questions based on my small presentation the St. Clair brief and the other book, Zen of Stars and Foreseen. So now, if you want to ask another question, we can address it. Okay, we have arrived at a point now in 2014 where the things we were talking about for about 10, 20 years, the things we were writing about, discussing events and trends that are coming, all this stuff is actually happening now or has happened past tense. Edward Snowden has come out and he's telling people um, that they're being spied on all over the world. This isn't just about America, this meeting is worldwide. Um, Jim Sinclair has come out and said, like we did, that people need to pull their money out of the banks to be safe, to, to be even able to survive financially. And we're talking to them about gold, about how to have their gold. I mean, where to put it physically, geographically. Singapore and so on. I mean, we're discussing other detail of how to be prepared at all times for what is transpiring now. 
In other words, we're not preparing for something that's in a hundred years or in ten years that we think may or might happen. We're now actually in the zone of the real event, of the trend line that is it's going on now. So things are some of the things they are going to ask us are like very applied, technical, detailed um, issues, like where do you put your uh, precious metals, how do you behave on the internet, how do you search websites, how do you send emails safely, and that kind of stuff. It's a pretty serious meeting. It's no longer the theory of, uh, you know, but the big picture. When are you talking about? 2014 now to up to 2021. For instance, <coughs> Jim Sinclair, the gold guru, he said something really interesting. He said he feels what comes next in the next two to four years, say, to, to have no more middle class, at least in the Western world. We're talking, of course, of the Western world for now, because we're not experts at what happens in China or Russia, frankly. So we're talking among Westerners. And then he's saying after the great leveling, say 2016, and I agree with that, otherwise I wouldn't bring it up, but they're trying to basically level the whole society economically. They want comes the great reset. And I've actually explained to him astrologically that it is in 2021. I can give you an exact date, by the way. It's the 21st of January, 2021. That's the day when the sun has moved into Aquarius. This, by the way, also, oddly enough, when a new uh, American president will take office, either a new one or the one who will have been elected in 2016. So what I'm trying to say is these things that we're talking about right now in 2014, they're actually quite relevant for a long time into 2021 when the Great Reset will happen. And that reset is seen astrologically very pretty, very beautifully, because you have um, Jupiter, I say you have Jupiter here, Saturn here, and Pluto way out there, all lining up right at the end of Capricorn, moving into Aquarius. And that was a forecast. And this is an effect that one can call a reset a societal, economical reset. It's like pushing the reset button, putting everything back to zero. Now in economy this means when 9-11 happened, that's about 12 years ago now or more, um, Saturn was then in Gemini, right, Twin Towers structure, and Pluto in Sagittarius, opposite. That's at that moment the economy started to tank in 2001. That's pretty much why they did 9-11. So it takes Saturn literally all this time, 20 years into 2021 in the winter to go in line of Pluto at the end of Capricorn. So the conjunction that started there winds up in an opposition and it's at that point that we have a chance perhaps to have a new economy. It's not before 2021 that we're actually going to see you know, any improvement in what is going on. Okay, so I was saying 2016, the great leveling of society begins. In 2021, the great reset gets started. I'm talking now just in the large scope because you asked what is the relevance. It actually goes all the way to 2045, 2048 even. I mean, I know it seems a bit crazy. 2048 relevant to people today? That's a good question. It's 35 years away. Um, well, it is actually relevant because, okay, first of all, 35 years, that's not a long time, right? That's maybe about a third of a life, a half a life. It's like children born now will be 35 then. People our age will actually still see this through at age 80, 85. So it's relevant because it is a it's sort of a half a lifetime, so we should look further than people, humans have a tendency to just look at tomorrow, next month, they want to know what's up next week. But I'm saying, we'll understand what's going on now if we look further out. So this, you're saying this will affect a particular generation? Yes, of course. It's going to affect actually two generations. 
us now, the children, the next generation, and their children. So it's actually at least three generations, if, if we're looking at this carefully. And so it is relevant, because the decisions that were taken in the past, the wrong decisions or better decisions affect us now, and the decisions we're going to take now, in very tense moments, tense astrological alignments, will affect, obviously, the outcome of our life personally, collectively, societal, in terms of economy, in terms of you know, macroeconomics, the behavior of countries, geopolitics, it will affect just everything about everything, even technology, even how our discoveries in science will look like. Because if we don't take sort of the right turn now, we may not have a chance for another, I don't know, 40, 50 years. I can say that really only in 45, 46, 2045 to 2048, <coughs> when we have Uranus in uh, Virgo, that's high technology, high tech, new um, service related breakthroughs in opposition to Pluto and Jupiter in Pisces, which that is sort of highly esoteric, spiritual, etc. When these two huge outer planet clash in an opposition that is in 2045 to 2048 again that's a four year period is the moment when I see that we have a new outcome when we have a a completely new societal development a breakthrough scientifically technologically even psychologically for a whole new generation. So it's big. I mean, what we're talking about is big, but we have to bring it back down to the detailed solutions of, of what everybody has to do now to move through this time safely. And so you're saying that the events are going to influence a whole g generation? Yes. Yes. Therefore affecting the future. Yes. And that's why it's relevant 30 years from now. What's happening today? Yes. That what's happening now in 2014, particularly in April, in uh, spring of 2014, why well, it lasts really all a, a whole year. See these astrological phases, people don't really understand. Those are phases, zones of time, passages. Sure, you can point to a day and say that's when it's ultra hot or very tense, but it's always entire phases. So it began in June, July of 2013, when we had this sextile hexagon tetragram alignment which actually is in effect until summer 2014 so right there you see this is already a one year phase then you have the greater square and cross between Uranus in Aries the technological new breakthroughs I'm talking right now 2013 14 15 and this position of Uranus is um, in opposition to Mars in Libra and then they are crossed squared by the opposition going on right now that also lasts at least a half a year between Pluto and Jupiter, Pluto in Capricorn, societal um, erosion, um, government secrecy, revamping of entire large structure, finance, banking, everything that's Capricorn, Pluto is undoing and undermining. This is where a guy like Snowden fits in, Jupiter in Cancer, where the um, issues are about security, safety, feeling at home, building a safe surrounding around yourself, etc. This is a huge, and you see it when you, when you look at the charts, is an exact square cross in the middle of the cardinal signs. Aries, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer. And so you're having this meeting early in 2014 to uh, show people how to prepare for this? Yes, yes. Because they, we have had these meetings already since about, uh, oh I forgot, since we did this thing with Project Camelot, seven years at the very latest, 
at the very least, I mean, I think I've been doing meetings for 10 years, more or less, with clients, subscribers, but now I have a private network for our subscribers and clients with pure safety, of course. We, we knew about the internet. We, to us, what Snowden is saying is not new. I mean, let's face it, we've been saying for years we have to be um, intelligent about how we use the internet, how we use the technologies we have. But now our clients, subscribers of mine, they're saying, okay, I've understood, we need to get gold, we need to get silver. I mean, these things are old. We've been saying this for like a 10, 20 years. James Sinclair has been saying it. And now they're coming and saying, okay, we understood that we have to do it, but how in detail are we going to do it? Do we keep it in Singapore? Um, how do we do the transfers? Um, is Germany going to be safe? How do I leave my uh, American citizenship, for instance? I mean, I'm not kidding. This is the kind of stuff people are asking me. There's tons of people handing back their passports in America, for instance. That's a trend. Then they ask, okay, how do you get another citizenship? Like, for instance, if you have, um, say, Irish ancestry, can you get an Irish passport? I mean, this is very applied stuff that involves legal advice, financial, technological advice. It's kind of involved and it's practical, applied. This is no longer the blah blah about how the astrology works in 20 years or in 100 years. Although, this is the background that we also have to understand. But our solutions are researched and specific to each client. Right? If you're in America, in the United States, and you want to leave, and you want to go to Canada, or to Ireland, or to Singapore, that's one set of questions. If a person lives, say, in Germany, or in Europe, anyone realizes, well, maybe there could be issues of this or that kind here. Should I go, maybe, say, to Africa, because Africa is the future. How do you do that? Or are you going to Russia to get citizenship there because maybe Russia will be the next solution for the next, who knows, 50, 100 years. I mean, I'm trying to say in all this convoluted talk that there are very precise, applicable solutions that can be researched and looked into. We explore all that stuff, discuss it at meetings within the macroeconomy and the geopolitics that are unfolding. Like, for instance, we were saying in the little book, in other things we wrote, I, I was saying the way we are guided, we understand that Russia under Putin and his successors and China, maybe India, but the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and possibly Germany, if Germany takes the right turn, will be the future successful economies. I'm talking now like 50 to 100 years from now in the bigger, longer term picture. So if we know this now, and we trust this knowing, we can already now take certain measures in that direction. Other people just get stuck in where they are now, in the Western system, which is going down. The astrology clearly shows how this is going down. So this begins in April 2014. I mean, has begun. It's proceeding in April 2014. We have this very exact great grand square cross. And then it goes on to develop into 2000. 20 and 2021 when there is the big triple conjunction between Saturn, that's economy, society, Pluto and Jupiter and these three guys come together in line at the cusp between Capricorn and Aquarius. I'm just showing you the steps, 2014, 2020, then comes 2026, it goes sort of in six year steps. In 2026, in February, we have Saturn has now passed in line of Pluto in Capricorn, passes in line of Neptune in Pisces. This could be a time travel signature, this could be a signature of where, how reality is measured, meets with Neptune, which rules the seas, even still in Pisces, which rules also ecological subjects. For instance, we will see then what Fukushima really means, because this is all all these things can beautifully be shown in astrology and they show us markers from 2014 to 2020, the greater reset, 2026, when it begins to be seen that we have to function in a totally different society. And then up to 20 years later, 2046, when this big opposition between Uranus and Pluto takes place, and that's hard to say what that will mean, but basically it's a 
complete um, meltdown, reset, um, new organization of society, of mankind, of um, technologies being used. Of it's just at that point that it will become clear what began in the sixties. Because in the 60s is when Uranus, Pluto were conjunct in Virgo and takes all that time for it to actually then be manifested what will come about. I can't say yet what that means. That's for the moment, like you said, far out, 35 years away. But I know from the alignment that that is when we will see the result. We, we don't see the result now. We won't see it yet in six years. This is a process. What I'm trying to explain is we have to keep in mind it's a process. It's not a a moment photography. You see what I mean? And so are you saying that the astrology casts a reality shadow on people's minds? Yeah, that's well said. The astrology is a mirror of what's going on in human affairs. An economy, which means simply the management of a household, the world economy, that's human affairs and geopolitics is also human affairs at the macro level. So astrology can measure it because it simply mirrors the alignments, reflect what the people do here and vice versa. Now there's another school of thought that would even go further and says astrology would actually influence it to some degree that's correct. Like for instance, at the end of 2013-14, right when 2013 becomes 2014, there is a comet coming in. I haven't talked about that. ISON, I-S-O-N. The Russians discovered it. It's a comet that will whip around the sun right around December, November, December 2013. And the astrophysicists the, the higher level astrologers who actually know astronomy and fixed stars, they say the alignment falls right in the week when Jupiter, Uranus and Pluto make that square, the T-square, at the most precise moment. Now we don't know what that means, but certainly there must be a, a magnetic a pull. A, there's a clear physical correlation. And I think the comet will be later seen when it has passed and gone around the sun, it will be later then seen as some sort of a messenger. It will have mirrored the moment when something very important is being shown because that comet comes relatively close into the system here and whips around the sun, like I said, at the moment when these outer planets are making that precise square. So that's kind of interesting that at the moment when planets form a very precise configuration, is when a comet comes in, which doesn't really have anything to do with astrology in that sense. That's pure astronomy, astrophysics. So there has got to be obviously some correlation. So I can say that already as the winter of 2014 begins, is when, you know, things get tense. But there are always through these tense moments, through this stress, the astrological stress one can see in the charts, there are also always great opportunities, like there's still, for instance now between Jupiter in Cancer, Saturn in Scorpio, the debt redemption, redemption of debt, taking care of these preposterous economies, you know, the propaganda ministry is telling everybody, oh, we're in a recovery, when the astrology clearly shows, no, actually we're in the disintegration phase, you know, the, the decompostation, like when compost becomes nothing. But there are moments like in this April 14 alignment, that's the hottest one, that's what that meeting is about. You're asking why do we do this meeting? We're actually preparing for that moment when the astrology shows that we're going through the tightest alignments. But we then still also have beautiful Pisces alignments that form, in other words, a grand trine. So we have triangular, fully equilateral triangles taking place inside of huge squares. Anyway, long and short, the geometry is fascinating when you look at it as a, if you're interested in geometry and looking at charts, you see that there is really interesting designer geometry going on in the astrology. 
and then we discuss what this means in society. In science breakthroughs, technology, for instance, will we get a new internet? I think we will work on another different kind of internet in the future. It reflects, of course, in economy, the prices of the metals. For instance, I found out other astrologers have also seen that financial astrologers that when Mars is in Scorpio, we've seen this now for the last 12 years, each time we see that gold takes the next level up. So we're able to actually use astrology to answer the question of how it casts a shadow on human affairs. We can use it to say statistically, well, when this planet goes through this sign and makes this and this alignment to another planet, then gold tends to do this or the other. These kinds of, op these kinds of observations do actually have some value. Are you saying the future is already set up? Hmm. No, no, not really, no. The, the future is not... Uh, part of it is sure there's a development taking place, but no, I wouldn't say that because that would mean we're taking away our choice. I and, think... The f and yes. so for that reason you're doing a series of meetings in 2014 to teach people how to relate mm -hmm. to the astrology of the times rather than that the astrology is, is destiny. Yes, 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 that's your, right. Your meetings in 2014 are to show people how to deal with... Yeah, it's... It goes in that direction, okay, this goes to the core of the whole of my work, the books I've written, the, the things we've published in the last 10 years. I, I believe astrology is an instrument by which we can measure the timing and we can measure more or less the trends of what um, is likely to happen. In that sense, the answer would be yes, certain things are foreseeable the book is called Foreseen and but that doesn't mean it's set in stone because if that was so then there's no point for us to do anything I believe we then when we know what the trend is or what the subjects the themes the issues are going to be about have done the ability and the possibility to um, make our preparations intelligently I mean this is not out of fear or anything it's just that when we know like I said what happens in the grand geopolitical spheres. We know the Atlanticists were planning to create this arc of instability all the way through, say, to Chechnya or, or Setia, and we know that Fuzov tells us that they know full well what those guys are up to and why the Russians, the Chinese and India, BRIC, etc., creates a new financial world of their own. And when we know all of these bigger pieces of the future that are coming together and we see the preparations that certain countries are taking, well then we should also be able to use our mind um, practically and intelligently and figure out what the best way would be for us to fit into the evolving picture, in the bigger picture. And then in the smaller picture, our little picture, we can then think about um, proactive, positive things, such as um, like maybe some of us would be able to create a new internet. I mean, I'm not kidding, we should be able to, with what we know, to create a whole new way of um, communicating among each other, design maybe even new computers, design, anyway, a new technology. Others will use their knowing if they're engineering type guys, like we have a person that we know who is into this. Um, to use um, and develop a free energy to yet yeah, other people who have the gift as healers to develop a whole new form of medicine I mean I'm talking about the fact that we as as small people can use our gifts within that bigger picture I was describing to bring about the change that's Krishnamurti we can actually with two or three people bring about 
important societal change, even if it's, to begin with, only used locally around us. And then when others also locally around themselves work in this manner, create a network that will span the globe. That's already going on, anyway. And you call this practical astrology? Yes. Applied. Applied astrology. We're applying this measuring of time, understanding the trends into how we can actually do things better and not be surprised by what's going to happen. So we were not surprised when Snowden said what he said because we knew that, but we already were working towards, you know, making sure we use the internet intelligently or we're not surprised when the gold price will all of a sudden be at $7,000 because we knew 10 years ago we're going into a 20-year bull run, a market that develops until 2021. So I'm just showing little examples of, say, way markers, the buoys into which the fleet can go, we, where we knew, okay, don't go left of that side and don't go right out of that side, but we have a, a flight pass where we knew and we know where we can move more or less safely. So you use astrology like a compass to navigate? Yeah, that's well said. It's a compass. And when you look at these charts or these, um, I have some of them on screen, I've made one, for instance, by hand. That's well said, a compass of time to navigate the future. This one here I've hand painted is the one for 2045, 46, so say um, 30 some years away from now, where you see uh, Uranus and Mars down here in Virgo opposing Pluto and Jupiter in Pisces. So I think that is the time when, when it gets really hot. This, this is when we will know where the world is at, where this group of stranded humans, what's going to happen. I think this shows that we're going to have a change in technology, in the use of technologies, and also a change of society about how we are going to basically govern and manage ourselves. That's what this chart shows. That's why I'm showing it already way ahead. I know other, other people just want to know what happens next week, but I don't like doing 50 videos per year. I'm doing the work, I'm advising people, so I do maybe one video per year where I answer to questions that our clients ask us. So, um, 